Hello there, my name is Dan with NM Rocketry Reviews. So last week we had a little live stream where we built the payload bay for our weather balloon. So we didn't get to finish it even though it was a four hour stream. So we did finish it this week, so we just wanted to show you all the features and what's going on inside along with a bit of math to find out um, the air resistance of this payload bay. So let's get started. So this payload bay is mostly made out of styrofoam and for two reasons. One, it's super light and two, it retains heat very well. Once this thing gets super high up, it's going to get to negative 40 degrees Celsius, which is coincidentally also negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, at that temperature, batteries are going to fail and the high altitude data logger won't be able to function properly. So we're going to keep all those things inside the payload bay with a couple of hand warmers to keep it all warm and cozy. If you want to see the build for this whole payload bay, we did live stream it last week and there's a card in the upper right hand corner if you want to check that video out. Um, anyways, this payload bay holds a point and shoot camera that is pointing straight up so we can get some cool shots of the balloon popping and it also holds our high altitude data logger which is an Arduino Mega with a PCB shield and we'll get into some more components and features of that later and it holds hand warmers on the side which will keep the whole thing warm along with that it holds a couple of batteries um, which will keep the point and shoot, the, uh, the Arduino high altitude data logger, and the Insta360 360, 360 degree camera powered and good to go. So let's get into some features and let's take a look inside the box. All right, so let's take a look inside of this payload bay. So we just have a couple of things on the outside here just in case somebody else finds this whole box before we do, just so they don't pick it up or find it dangerous and think that it's just something that just fell out of the sky. So here we are, we're gonna open this thing up. So right here is a point and shoot. This thing's gonna be recording while facing upwards so we can get some cool shots of the balloon popping. Later on, we're gonna cover this thing in copper foil because these things actually emit an electromagnetic signal which can actually screw up the GPS. Um, anyways, we kinda go a bit lower here. We have these two crossbars and what these two crossbars do is they're connected to all these cables right here. As you can see, they're all tied up here. And that's what's going to be holding this box securely. Um, that way, um, this thing is on nice and tight. This thing is not going to come off because um, if this thing falls out of the sky, that's really bad. Right below that, we have, of course, a high altitude data logger. Like I said, I'll go over some more features of that later on. And we have right below that, the battery and a nine volt right here. So we have some status indica indicators right here. This button right here is um, a very important button. What it will do is it will save the data once everything has been logged. So when, after this thing lands and we recover it, we'll open this thing up and we'll push this button. And what that will do is it will save all the data that is on our micro SD card. That way we can review all the data that has come through this thing. Along with that, we just have a green light here to show that everything is good and everything is working um, nominally, as Tim Dodd would say. Uh, the reason we have two um, batteries here is this extra 9 volt is just for redundancy in case this battery below um, runs out of charge. Um, this extra battery will actually ensure that the high altitude data logger won't run out of charge. We also have another status indicator right here. This is just another bright way to show us what's going on. So for instance, if we reset this thing and the SD card module is not plugged in, it will give you a red light. But if it is actually plugged in, it will give you a green and then a blue light. So that's pretty much everything. On the sides here, we're going to actually be having four of these um, hot hand hand warmers on each side. Um, these little things keep the hand warmers separate from the battery and the battery is held in place by these two um, pieces right there. We're going to have two on each side to keep this thing all warm. So that's pretty much the whole design. Um, so let's go over the high altitude data logger. So the high altitude data logger. So this thing is pretty much the heart of the whole payload bay. It records all the science data that we're going to need. So what does it measure? It measures a temperature sensor from outside, 
humidity sensing from outside, internal temperature, um, the acceleration data from the IMU, along with um, pressure. That way we can find the altitude of this thing. This thing uses an Arduino Mega as a whole uh, brains of the operation with a PCB Arduino shield on top. That way we didn't have to use a breadboard or any painful soldering. So let's go over all the sensors we use. So our high altitude data logger utilizes a couple of different sensors to get the data we need. Um, it has sensors both mounted on the inside of our payload bay and on the outside. On the outside, we have a humidity sensor, the DHT22, and a temp temperature sensor, the DS18B20. The DS18B20 is a super nice sensor because one, it's super cheap, it has a very long range, it's accurate, and it's super easy to use. Um, this thing was super cheap, it was like seven bucks for 10 of them, and it's easy to use because it has three pins, one goes into a digital pin, another goes into power, another to ground. So it's super easy to um, use, and it has a very wide temperature range, and it's very accurate. Um, for humidity, we have the DHT22 humidity sensor. Um, when on a weather balloon flight, the humidity can range from 0 to 100% humidity, which is a very wide humidity range. So we used this sensor because it also has a wide humidity measuring range. This thing also measures temperature and heat index, but the range isn't high enough, so we're probably going to throw away that data because it's going to become inaccurate once we get into the colder temperature regions. So on the inside, we have a couple of different sensors as well. We have the ADXL337 from SparkFun. This thing is a IMU, or an inertial measurement unit. This thing will give us all the acceleration data that we need. And on another sensor we have is the MPL3115A2. This thing is pretty much a barometer, but we're not actually going to be using the barometer because um, it can only measure to about 30,000 feet, which isn't nearly high enough for what we need. It does, however, have a temperature sensor, which we're going to be using to measure the internal temperature of the payload bay. That way we know if it got too hot or too cold inside the payload bay. So for altitude, you may be wondering what we're using. We did try out the GY86, but we were sold a faulty sensor, which was quite annoying indeed. So we had to return that. So we're probably going to be um, replacing it with a breakout board for the MS5611 pressure sensor. The MS5611 is uh, super nice. It has a very um, wide range, so we can measure pretty much up to like 120,000 feet, which is way more than we need and it's very accurate within like 10 centimeters. So that's probably what we're going to be using. Um, originally, we were going to have the GY86 done in time for this video, but just before we figured out that this, the whole breakout board was faulty, so we had to go return it. So we're probably going to just add that on later this week or next week. So we'll let you know how that goes. So those are pretty much all the sensors on our board. So how can you guys have a part in this project? We're not asking for money here, by the way. We put together this cool little form that you guys can fill out. You can fill out your name along with a cool little quote or an inspiration that you guys have. We're going to be printing those out physically and putting them inside this box. That way your name can go to the edge of space. So if you're interested, this is completely free and optional. You don't have to put your name at all and um, you don't have to do this at all if you don't want to. But it's a cool little opportunity. You guys can go check that out. Link is down in the description if you want to go fill that out. So a couple of little updates before we get into some of the physics and calculations and stuff like that. We did make this cheap little radar deflector out of aluminum foil and cardboard. It's really not necessary because it's not required, but we really don't want um, aircraft hitting this weather balloon um, because that's, not, that's obviously not safe. So we're gonna put this radar deflector on. Additionally, before the launch, we're going to issue a NOTAM, which is a notice to airmen to make sure that um, they are staying clear of this payload and that everyone is safe. So this radar deflector is uh, super easy to make. You just need cardboard, glue, and aluminum foil. You really don't need to buy, buy it. They're like 70 bucks if you buy it. You can just make one out of some spare cardboard and aluminum foil. There's a lot of instructions out there if you wanna um, make your own radar deflector there. This thing will just be mounted on the paracord which will be mounted to the weather balloon. Also, we did buy a weather balloon. Um, this thing's a bit older, it was donated to us. 
we're actually going to, going to end up buying another weather balloon. That way we have two because these weather balloons are super fragile. Also, another quick update, we did get the Jolly Logic shoot release. That way we can release our parachute super quickly. Um, this was also donated to us, so thank you so much. But anyways, how it's gonna work is it will release the parachute at a certain altitude. So we're actually going to have two parachutes on board, a drogue chute and a main chute. The drogue chute will open immediately after the balloon pops because it will be held between the payload bay and the uh, balloon. And then the um, main chute will be held by the chute release. So the drogue chute will just keep it somewhat slow before the main chute opens. That way it's not going at bonkers speed before um, the main chute opens and then at maybe a thousand feet or so we can set the altitude when the chute opens the jolly logic chute release will open the parachute at a said altitude so pretty much how it works is um there's a rubber band around the parachute and once the jolly logic chute release detects that we're at that certain altitude using its barometer it will release this rubber band mechanism and the chute will open we're actually probably going to be using a bigger parachute than the um shoot that's shown right here but um the calculations for the whole parachute is what we're going to discuss right now all right time to do some calculations here so i'm really new to physics and math and all this stuff so please let me know if any of my calculations or my thinking is wrong because i kind of have a feeling that something's gonna go wrong so please let me know down in the comments if anything's wrong with my calculations here but here I go, this is how I think this is gonna work. So we did some um, drop tests of this thing with a bungee cord attached, um, kind of, just to um, make sure it doesn't hit the ground at super speeds. And we had some high speed cameras going while this thing dropped. Going frame by frame, we were able to find the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the time in between. And using that, we were able to find the acceleration. So now we have that acceleration value and we multiplied it by the mass, which is 1.25 kilograms, um, which um, those two multiplied is going to be equal to the net force according to Newton's second law, which says net force equals mass times acceleration. So now we can find um, the, the force. So there's two forces acting on this object while it was in free fall, and that was um, force of gravity, Fg, and force drag or force air, um, F air. So force gravity is equal to mg, so that'd be 1.25 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared. And we can do that right now. So 1.25 times 9.81. So that means our net force, or no, our force of gravity was 12.2625. And just to be clear, force of gravity is the weight of the object. So now we have the force of gravity and we can subtract that from our net force and we should get our air resistance. So according to my calculations, we have two point here. All right. So according to the calculations, we have 2.23 Newtons um, of air resistance. I don't know if that's really right or not, but I think that's the air resistance of this thing. Uh, we don't really need to find the air resistance of this payload bay. I just thought I might test my physics abilities with you guys. So please let me know if any of that was wrong because I don't know if that was really right and um, any of my methods were correct or my calculations. So please let me know. But let's head over to the computer and show you the calculator we have. All right, so to calculate the diameter or what type of parachute we need, we can use this handy dandy calculator. So let's go ahead and find it. Calculate, parachute calculator. There we go. Let's drag it over here. All right, so um, I haven't actually worked on this much, so I need to find out how fast we want this thing to land. So I think 15 meters per second should be our low speed impact. No, I think 12 meters per second should be our low speed impact and 15 meters per second should be our high speed impact. So we need to find what that is in miles per hour. I'm going to cheat, and I have a ton of random stuff going on here. I'm gonna cheat and 
find that FPS to miles per hour. So low speed, let's do 10 feet per second. 6.81818181 miles per hour. I mean, that should be a good low speed impact. 6.18, and now let's open that up. Oh, I think 16 should be our high speed. So that's 10.9 for our high speed impact miles per hour. So um, now we got our payload weight. So our weight's gonna be, uh, let's see. Our weight was, oh yeah, I actually remember our weight. Our weight was 2.5 miles per hour, or 2.5 pounds. And then our payload areas, um, it's a 12 by 12, so it's 144 inches squared, perfect. And um, our parachute should be about 60 inches in diameter. And then we have the minimum diameter is 42.4 and maximum 78.3. So it's actually perfect because we do have a parachute, a six foot parachute, and that is um, 72 inches. So that should be right in between there. And we also have the drogue chute, which isn't actually gonna make much of a difference. So this is a cool little handy dandy calculator we can have here. So if you wanna check that out, um, let us know down in the comments. So yeah, we now know our parachute width and what we, can, what we need to go buy. All right, if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to see more content like this. Also, put all your questions and comments down below and make sure to check out our Patreon because we're also selling merch there now. And follow us on Facebook if you wanna get frequent updates and see cool little pictures and stuff. Also, we have a website that's also linked down below so you guys can go check all that out. So thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more weekly updates and things like that. So, um, other than that, have a great day.